Hello, in this video we're going to develop a, a confidence ellipsoid for a, a multivariate mean vector and we're going to assume the data are normal with the known covariance matrix. Now in the univariate setting the ellipsoid would be an interval but since we're in multivariate mode then the confidence interval becomes an ellipsoid. So the background for this video, there's three videos uh, background video one is the spectral decomposition, a video I have out on that. BV2 is the principal components, the background part of this. And BV3 is the distribution of quadratic forms. Part two is the one specifically that I'm going to use in this video. So we're going to let X be a multivariate normal random variable, K dimensions, some mean vector, and known covariance matrix. The density would be this right here. F of X is this. And notice that, that X is the random variable. So this is a constant, this is a constant, the, you know, the minus one half is a constant. So the things that change here. So if somehow we uh, create X's that make this constant, so call this C squared. And then we look at all the X's that make that c squared okay so what that is it's called a contour or a, a probability contour so when this uh, quadratic form is constant i.e. it equals some c squared then it's called a constant probability uh, density contour but what region are the x's you know, we change these x's, but we still do it in a way that it equals c squared. Does do the um, x's make some some uh, shape? And that's kind of what we're dealing with in this video. So theorem one says the the contours of constant density for this multivariate normal. So we're in this in this setting are ellipsoids. So this is an ellipse or ellipsoid. It's centered at the mean vector, and the axes have uh, this length. So this this is where this is the endpoint of the ellipse. So if it's a, a two-dimensional ellipse, you know, then this EI is the eigenvector that points in this direction, and and that's the length of this half. And then the eigenvector you take it minus it, and it kind of points in this opposite direction. But since there's k dimensions, there's k axes, and so each of the axes can be developed or be determined by this. And this is where lambda is the eigenvalue and EI is an eigenvector of the known covariance matrix. So the proof is this, uh, by BV1, which is a spectral decomposition, we can write sigma as P lambda P, and then instantly we know that the uh, sigma inverse is P uh, lambda inverse P prime where P is the matrix of eigenvectors and lambda is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues and so this is this is a diagonal uh, matrix and then this is actually a diagonal matrix but it's the reciprocal of these here and then um, so then this so sigma 1 inverse can be written like this, okay? And, and we see this because of this. So these are eigenvectors times the diagonal matrix. So you get something that looks like this. And remember, this is 1 over the lambda. And then when you take that product times this, you, you're taking it times this. But you're, it, it creates a sum. So that's how you, you get... Uh, this value from here and I have more detail in BV1 so then the constant um, you know the constant density ellipsoid we're going to call it C is this but then let's replace what Sigma inverse is by this so we're going to put that right here and then next we're going to bring in these these vectors in here which is what we do here. Now this is a constant, so it can just be 
uh, taken out front of this. Now look at this. This is a vector, k by 1. Uh, I mean 1 by k because it's transposed. And this is k by 1. So this is 1 by 1. So this is a constant. And actually, if we flip it, we get the same thing. So we get actually this. So this is a number times a number. We can take it squared. And that's what we do here. Um, and then this stays the same. And now on the next page, we're just going to call this y squared. So then we get this sum. Well, this, this is an ellipse. You know, and if... Uh, so, and then where y, of course, is, is, is this. It's the eigenvector times this vector. And then by BV2, with, and that's the background video on principal components, we talk about rotation of axes and ellipsoids. This is an ellipsoid centered at, at the mean, and it has axes of this value. Okay, so I would recommend going to BV2. So it's true. Now, theorem 2 Let's look at this quadratic form here. And, we're, and the claim is that it's chi-squared with k degrees of freedom. And of course, x is multivariate normal with some mean vector and known uh, covariance matrix. And the proof is this. If we make a variable transformation, x minus the mean, then uh, y is multivariate normal with uh, mean 0 and the same covariance matrix. And now these two properties here, so if this is equal to this, which in this case it is, because this is the identity, and then we're left with this, and the trace, which is k, then by BV3, we know that this quadratic form, which is this, is distributed with chi-squared, it's a central chi-squared with k degrees of freedom. So, now to create the ellipsoid, so theorem 3, uh, the 1 minus alpha percent confidence ellipsoid for the mean vector are all vectors sigma hat such that satisfy this, um, you know, this quadratic form. It's centered at the sample mean and it has axes of this length. And, of course, where lambda and EI are the eigenvalue vectors of, of sigma. So the proof is this. Now, note that if we look at the sample distribution of X bar, so the, the sample mean vector, it's also multivariate normal with the same mean, but the standard error of that mean is sigma over N. And um, I don't have a video out on this, but I think I'm going to put one out. Uh, so by theorem 2, we know that this quadratic form is chi-squared with k degrees of freedom, but this is, this n, you know, inverse actually come, it comes up to the top and is this. So this is chi-squared with k degrees of freedom. And note that um, if we look at this, so this is the quantity. Remember that we're moving... We're putting in different mu vectors such that this is less, well, yeah. So we're, we're putting in different mean vectors for this and seeing the shape of it. And But if we take this times 1, it doesn't change it. So let's take it times minus 1 and minus 1. And then that those two rotate in the middle here. And I do that because it's somehow for me, it's easier to see that since we're changing up these mu hat vectors, that this is going to be centered at the, the sample mean. Okay, and then you can see that in um, BV2. And then so, but by theorem one, the result follows that this, this uh, uh, quadratic form is an ellipsoid. And we're saying that it's less than, you know, if this is quadratic, k degrees of freedom, I mean a chi-squared with k degrees of freedom, and then we want this to be less than that alpha cutoff value, then, then it follows that the, the ellipsoid uh, axes have this length in this direction. Um, now, a couple notes here. 
Uh, note one, as N increases, the volume of this confidence ellipsoid decreases, limiting to the mean vector, which we know the mean, and then we know the mean vector converges to the mean, sample mean vector converges to the population mean vector. So if we look at this axis, right, so we're dividing by N, so as N gets larger and larger and larger, this length goes to zero which says that it's, it's uh, the length of that ellipsoid goes to zero, and it's centered at the sample mean, so it limits to that sample mean. So here, uh, uh, point two, for large enough n, an approximate confidence interval for the mean vector, are the, ve the uh, vectors mu hat satisfying this, where we plugged in the sample covariance matrix, so the sample covariance matrix is consistent, meaning it converges to the population covariance matrix. So if it gets large enough, this is going to be really close to the population covariance. So this becomes an approximate you know, confidence ellipsoid for the mean vector, where X bar and S are the sample mean and covariance matrix. All right, well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.